So in this section, I'm going to start off by going through an example in Millsoft Windmill, where we're working the uh, same problem we had in example number one. So again, we've got this 4160 to 480 volt transformer, 2500 kVA is a rating. We've got this 2000 kVA load that we're operating at 460. And we've got this R equivalent and X equivalent. Note in this case that the magnitude of this impedance, if you take the square root of R squared plus X squared, this is going to be 5.77. And then the X to R ratio is going to be 6.33. And the reason we need this is this is basically the data entry we need in windmill. So remember the load voltage was 40, 460 volts. The load current was 2,510 amps. Uh, on the source side, it was 289.6 amperes. The source voltage turned out to be 4,104 line to line corresponding to this voltage here. Um, power output in this case, the real power output was 1,800 kilowatts. At power factor of 0.9. So if we take the 2000 times the power factor, uh, this is where we get the 1800 from. And then this is what we have for the core loss. And this was the copper loss. And so uh, I'll go ahead and post this up on the Moodle side. I'll post the files for this. But this is what we get when we actually build this particular circuit. And what you can do is you can actually show the calculated data box which actually has all these different values. And what you see in this case is that uh, what we end up with is we end up with voltages that kind of match up to you know, what we had in our answer. But we'll kind of show, I'll show this in a different form in just a little bit. So when you build the circuit, this is a 4.16 kV um, rated source circuit, right? And I've got to energize the primary side of this transformer. And so I put a source in here. And note what I'm, I'm doing in this particular case is I'm setting this up where I, I take the line voltage I calculated in the problem. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be um, plugging that in this, in this particular case right here. So what I'm, what I'm doing uh, in this scenario, since I had the uh, voltage of 4,104, what I need to do is I need to put in a phase voltage. So what I'm actually doing in this case is I'm taking the 4,104, which is a line value, and I'm dividing that by square root of 3, and I'm going to be substituting this in here for the for the bus voltage, all right? So that's where that voltage is coming from right here. Um, I've got this set up for a Y connection. So this is modeling like a four wire supply in this case to the transformer. And then I've got the transformer model. And um, basically what I've got here is I, I'm setting up a piece of equipment for a 2,500 kVA 4.16 to 480. 4.16 kV to 480 volt. And I'll, I'll work this through online on uh, the next online session so you can see this in more detail. Um, but basically what I'm doing in this case is I, I put in the transformer data. Once this is um, defined in my equipment database, I put this into the, um, the transformer model. And then if I click on this button, this is going to jump me to the, to the transformer data definition. So once I'm in there, uh, and I've got this piece of equipment that has this particular name associated with it, then what I can do is I can select the type three phase transformer. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in that percent impedance and that X to R ratio, put in the rated value, the base value and the rated value to be the same. And I put in the no load losses. So once the transformer is defined, then I define the load. And in this case, what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm gonna take that 1800 um, at 0.9 power factor, 90% power factor, and this is going to be balanced. And so this will take the 
it'll take the total and it'll divide it up between the three phases so everything's all balanced. We're going to assume a load mix where um, it's going to be 100% constant power. And this is sort of the default right now. And so I can plug this in. And then when I run this, I run the voltage drop study, then what I'm going to see is I'm going to see in this case that I've got the, um, the voltage that I want across the load where I had actually set the source up to be 2,368. And so you note know in this case that what it's doing is it's actually giving you like a primary KV in this case, and it's gonna be 0.27. Um, that's a line to neutral value. Basically, if you wanna relate that to the 460, then what you need to do is you need to take the 460 and divide through by square root of three. So not necessarily real straightforward in this case to do the comparison, but you do see you've got the 2,510 amps on the secondary side. You got the 296 on the, on the primary side. Um, and then basically you can see that the losses in this case correspond to the to the uh, no load losses in the transformer plus whatever i squared r losses you have in the in the transformer as well so anyway it you, it does match up you know it does match up with the hand um, calculations but you can kind of see in here you know what you would get from running the boulders drop study so i'll i'll kind of go through this more in the online session so you can see this in a little bit more detail. Uh, you know, to make things easier to see, note that the default initially for looking at voltage was to have a base output voltage of 2,400 volts. And it didn't make that very convenient to see the values in this particular column. And so what, I do a lot of times is I, I change my base output voltage. When I do the voltage drop analysis, I change the base output voltage where it kind of corresponds to what the customer is going to see. And so in that case, it, it makes it more clear that across the load, we had a 460 volts line in that case. So anyway, we'll, 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 we'll keep talking about this more in the, in the online section. Um, one other thing I did on here, just to kind of show the impact of the transformer connection, is to just put a single line to ground fault on there. And so what you can do in this case is you can run what's called a fault flow. Um, and then when you run the fault flow, what you do is you select the location where you want the fault the type of fault, whether it's line to ground, or line to line, and you, and you choose the phasing and you click the execution symbol, this is going to run. And if this were a Y ground, Y ground transformer, what happens if you have a fault on the secondary side, then you also see the current on the, um, on the primary side. All right. So you see as far as the through amps, you see the fault current on the secondary of the transformer and you see this basically passing through um, passing through the transformer, right? Um, one thing that's kind of interesting is if you, if you change the transformer. So if you change a secondary to delta, what this does is it removes the, the ground path on the, on the transformer um, secondary. So if you, if you do something like this, then what you're going to see if you're going to go ahead and apply the fault, single line of ground fault, is you don't get any current at all. All right. And this is actually what happens in real industrial situations if I have an ungrounded service. And if I have a ground fault in the cir circuit, it doesn't draw any current. And so we have to do some other means of detecting this sort of fault um, other than um, looking at overcurrents in this case. Um, so anyway, just, just wanted to kind of show you that, you know, Millsoft does kind of model the impact of the transformer connection. What you actually can do on here is you can use different connection types and see what impact this is going to have on, on your short circuit analysis. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is 
the relationship between transformer temperature rise and loss of life. And kind of alluded to this before, and I just want to introduce this here. We're not going to do any homeworks on it. Maybe later on the semester, we'll revisit this because we are going to be looking at design decisions. But basically, whenever you load up a transformer, the transformer is going to heat up because it's got I squared R losses. And so if you really overload it, it's going to heat up more than it was designed to, and you're going to get a little bit of loss of life, maybe a lot, depending on how much you overload it. So when we talk about transformers, uh, we have this thing we talked about in terms of, you know, temperature rise, all right? And, and basically what we look at, is we look at um, what's going to be the average temperature rise. You know, typically we get that through measuring the oil temperature above ambient. And you see a lot of these transformers are designed either to operate 50 or 65 degrees centigrade above ambient. So when I talk about a 65 degree rise transformer, it's designed where in normal conditions, you know, you're going to get this um, oil temperature if it's if it's uh, oil cooled um, to, you know, perhaps rise up 65 degrees above ambient. Um, if you have dry type temp, temp, uh, transformers, um, resin type of insulation, you got different values that you would have. And then in a transformer, what you're going to see is you're going to have a hot spots in the magnetics. And so the hot spots could even get higher than this. You know, this is, this is based on average rise. So anyway, when I talked about this pad mount transformer before and I showed you a sample nameplate, if you look up into the upper left-hand corner, it's a 50 kVA device, but it's it's basically uh, designed to be a 65 degree C rise. And so what this basically means is we're going to get a 65 degree centigrade average um, winding temperature rise when this thing is is fully loaded. Hot spot they allow for another 15 degrees, so it can maybe even get at the hot spot like 80 degree C above what the ambient temperature would be. Um, but basically, we're, we're kind of looking at an average value where we're going to measure this at the top of the tank. So if it turns out we have a transformer, you know, these things are usually designed um, assuming you have like an ambient temperature of maybe like 30 degrees C. So if for some reason you're operating this in a hotter environment, let's suppose it's in some sort of room with a lot of electrical equipment can even get hotter, um, transformer operations are going to get impacted because it's going to depend on the ambient temperature, right? If the ambient temperature gets higher, then that, that means that the inside of the transformer is going to get hotter, right? Uh, the other thing that's going to impact um, cooling of the transformer is going to be altitude. So you get up in the higher altitude and you get less air density that impacts your cooling effect. And then also too, depending on the transformer's exterior finish, the color, and if you're out in the sun or not, that's gonna you know, determine what sort of additional heating you're gonna get from that. So anyway, um, as far as the operating temperature, again, you know what we do is we work everything out with respect to the outside what we call the ambient temperature. And again, what these calculations normally assume is a 30 degree to C ambient, which corresponds to 86 degrees. So it turns out that if we're going to go ahead and operate with higher ambience for whatever reason, then really what we ought to be doing is derating the transformer a little bit. And then this basically says right here that for every um, degree C above 30, you know, we ought to be de decreasing the loading on it by 1.5% of its rated um, KBA. If it, conversely, if we're operating under colder conditions, we can actually, you know, um, kind of uprate it a little bit too. The reason we're so concerned about temperature is that we have an insulation on our windings. There's different types of insulation we could use. But as that transformer overheats, what it does is it basically cooks the insulation. And so what this means is if we're overloading it and we cook the insulation, 
that at some point that insulation is going to fail. And so we were very cognizant of, of operating temperature and overloads. And um, what they found out, you know, a number of years ago, that this relationship between um, transformer loss of life and temperature you operate at is um, given by what's called this Arrhenius equation. So basically what this says is the log to base 10 of the life in hours is equal to a constant plus uh, another constant over um, temperature, where T in this case is an absolute temperature in what we call degrees Kelvin. Say if you, you take the temperature at the hot spot and you add 273 to that to get this in Kelvin. And A and B are coefficients that we can determine experimentally, um, sometimes in the lab. So again, this is kind of an estimate. You know, if you take two transformers and you basically overload them the same, they may not respond exactly the same. It kind of depends on the manufacturer and you know what chemistry is used and if they you have a slightly different batch of chemicals that they use to, to make up the insulation. Um, but but basically we can use this Arrhenius relationship to sort of figure out if I overload a transformer, what's going to be the impact on the, the transformer life. So this is a, a life expectancy curve, which is from one of the standards which are used to define um, the impact of of overloading a transformer, you know what they have in here is they have on the vertical axis normal life expectancy. And basically that if this hot spot and the transformer doesn't get too high, whether you have a 65 degree or 55 degree C rise transformer, you get a lot of life out of this. Basically one of those transformers, if you just keep operating it where you don't really overheat it too much, it's gonna last, you know, 50 years or so, right? But if you start to cook the transformer, and you're gonna operate this transformer at um, higher temperatures, then what's gonna happen is this transformer is gonna have a severe loss of life. And so this is, you know, what we can actually consider if we, think, you know, we're going to have to overload the transformer for maybe like three or four hours due to a system event, you know, we could actually kind of estimate, put a number on what's going to be the loss in life in that transformer if we were going to do something like that. So anyway, there's a there's another set of tables in um, the ANSI standard that talks about this. I know this is pretty complex for you just to kind of look at and figure out what's going on, but basically, if we're talking about operating an ambient temperature of 30, then if you're going to be overloading this transformer, and this kind of gives you some different scenarios in here for overloading, um, but, but basically what this is telling you for different types of overloading conditions, you know, let's suppose we're going to be overloading at uh, above 50%, let's say, um, what's going to be the impact as far as extra loss of life? And so what we can see in this case that this is going to be um, occurring for a certain number of hours, say in this case like four hours, then basically this is going to define what we could potentially see as far as a percent loss of life. So, you know, if, you, if you're operating a transformer, or you say operating it, um, you know, I don't know, factor two, let's say over your peak loading condition, if you do this for four hours, you know, basically what this is going to do is this is going to give you a 0.5% loss of life of the transformer. So, you know, this is something if you're like an operating engineer, you could check with your management on and you know, if you're in one of these situations is be like, well, do I continue to serve the load or do I go ahead and take an outage in order to protect this transformer? Again, this isn't a, a perfect type of a calculation. I mean, just because you do it this way, uh, does it necessarily going to give you this sort of percent? You know, this is just kind of based on test data and, and equations and things like that. But, but what you can actually see is that there is kind of a of a cost 
of overloading the transformer that eventually if you keep doing this over and over and over and you have a number of these different events, eventually you're going to take off enough life where the insulation is going to fail and it's going to, you know, turn into a short circuit and it's going to severely damage or maybe destroy the transformer. So anyway, um, we, we talked about this for single phase before, you know, the fact that you can stand certain types of overloads. You know, this is kind of showing you for an hour that you could, you know, overload it to 2.12 um, per unit. If it's two hours, this is a number. If this is four hours, if it's eight hours, you got 1.28. If you're talking about like 24 hours, you got 1.08. If you just keep it for a short period of time, it doesn't heat up too high and long enough where it causes damage. But when you're overloading it, the more time you're at this overloading condition, the more the more risk you're taking in this case. And this, ta this table right here attempts to quantify that for you. Um, so anyway, um, as far as references that you guys might want to be reading through, I I've got some sections in short book that I in Tom Short's book that I suggest as far as transformer types and kind of talks about the same things I did in this lecture, but in a little bit more detail. And then as far as the ANSI standards, the American National Standard Institute standards on transformers, you, you want to look at what's called the C57 series. Um, if you got this standard, it'd be this really thick book. Um, but this would be the standard that talks about transformers, all things transformers. And then specifically, if you got into C57.91, then that's the section where if you're looking at oil cool transformers, um, what can you get away with as far as overloading? All right.